Welcome to Blender Magi, everyone. Today we're going to be fooling around in Blender and we're going to make a low poly spaceship. That's right. And uh, we got to make sure we have a reference. As you can see on screen right now, I've got some spaceships. We got everything from realistic spaceships like the SpaceX capsule and even some more fantastical sci fi spaceships. Now, I did all this in mouse and keyboard to show you that you don't need an art tablet to do well in Blender, even though I'm horrible at mouse and keyboard modeling. Uh, I hope it actually turns out well enough that you guys will at least enjoy the video. With that being said, uh, if mouse and keyboard is all you have, you'll be just fine. And um, I'm going to be making some mistakes along the way for you to learn from. So, for instance, you should always be extruding certain areas of your ship out and editing from there. But I'm going to be kind of piecing things together like Lego pieces. That way, I can kind of show you how to stitch them together. You know, your workflow is going to depend on you. But with that said, let's get started. We're going to go ahead and start with a cube. Uh, it's, you know, no shame. You can start with a cube. You can start with a plane. It's whatever you want to do. I'm going to start with a cube in this video, and I'm going to extrude it out along one of the axes. I just want to make sure that I can get a good length for this ship. But now I need to kind of add some sides to it just to thicken it up a little bit. And we're done. <laughs> we have a spaceship. Let's flatten these up a little bit though. We're gonna, we're gonna work on it a little bit more than that. You can do what you want with your spaceship. I'm gonna flush this out a little bit and put some fuel containers on the side. I actually put quite a bit of effort into these fuel containers as compared to the rest of the ship. But I figured it would be a nice little, you know, bit there just to add some detail. So I decided I'll go ahead and go along with it. Now they don't end up being too large, but uh, they, they add some, interest to the side of it just to make it look not so dull otherwise pretty nice pretty easy we're working with basic shapes here you don't want to get too out of you know your zone here this video of course is for newer uh, modelers people that are new to blender people that are still trying to learn the basics i'm just using some primitives the primitives in Blender is the cone, the torus, the sphere, the cube. And uh, you can go ahead and do a lot with these. As you can see, I'm using, you know, a cylinder and a cube. I'm, I'm not doing too much else. I do end up using um, cones later on. Yep, there we go. I'm going to put that on the back end there. And that will be my engines. We'll swap it out, maybe duplicate it and uh, make a couple, you know, we can do whatever we want. I do recommend making instances, if you're gonna have multiple of a certain object, instead of duplication, uh, duplicating, because instances are gonna share data with each other and you're gonna have fewer vertices and polygons on the screen. So it makes it easier to render and play with for lower end systems. Now here we're going to work with the front end. Now I'm showing you this in a really roundabout way just to show you that you could piece things together. I've made a cube and I'm going to attach it to the front. This is not how you should do this. You should extrude the uh, front part out. Yeah, there I go. <laughs> Messing around. You should extrude the front part out and then do the little edits that I'm making right now. But I included it in here just to kind of talk about how you can add pieces and kind of glue them together. Honestly, you can use booleans with the union. I'm not going to do that in this video. We'll have a boolean video all on its own much later. Here we go with the spheres I was speaking about earlier. Placing them on top of my cylinders just to round out the tops and bottoms of my uh, fuel tanks here. And you can do whatever you want for your fuel tanks. I know they're using cylinders in outer space and even at some other earth factories. So you do what you want there. But I'm gonna use cylinders for the most part. It's just a part of uh, exploring the concepting and the sketching process. Just go in there and do something you think looks good. Over time, what you think looks good will change. It will evolve as you learn more and you you collect more information for your visual library. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and put a little housing section here. I wanna 
Maybe move it forward. Uh, all right, we're gonna put it on the back. That way we can kind of bounce it out. Looks more spaceshipy, kind of like a Star Wars type ship. You know, looking really nice. Looking really sexy, we'll widen it out. Throw some more engines on there. There we go. Looking pretty sick. I am liking this. Now this is part one and part two. I'm gonna be doing the uh, texturing part. So keep an eye out for that. But uh, yeah, as you can see, we're having an issue with our bevel. Now what we need to do is apply our scale, location, and rotation. And now our bevel works nice, nice and fine. But the bevel that we're using is kind of messed up. Your best bet is use control B. And then you can use your mouse to decide how many you want. Look at that. Mm, got one, which is a chamfer, or multiple, which is a bevel. Looking pretty nice. Let's go ahead and bring that back before I bevel it. Want to make sure that, you know, it looks a little more spaceshipy. And we'll add a couple there for the bevel. All right, I'm pretty happy about that. Let's, uh, let's bevel the front, since we're in a beveling mood. I need to make some additions here. Okay. Boom. We're just going to fix the sides up a little bit. Again, it's all personal um, explanation. It's just an example. Uh, yeah, I just want to show you how to glue things together if you're so inclined. Again, you could probably just extrude this out and then make the little edits that I'm showing. But I just want to show you that you don't have to be doing things perfect to get good or at least good enough results. This is a basic ship. This is something you're going to have in the background of your scene. It isn't the focus of your scene. And here I go trying to add a little bit more detail to the front. Just to kind of break up the shapes a little bit. I don't want to be too basic. I am still kind of going very simplified here, but at the same time, trying to make it to where it's gonna stand out on its own, to where it looks a little different, a little unique. So I'm just adding some shapes here. Now my mirror modifier is not clipping correctly, so now I fixed it. I've got that seam in the middle. Perfect, perfect. The way you do that is you pull them to get apart, then you turn on clipping, and then you smush them together. You don't want them to be together when you turn on clipping. We'll go ahead and bevel or chamfer the back here. We'll do a bevel. And yeah, I'm just going to go through and kind of refine it a little bit. I want to make sure that I'm not, you know, putting too much detail into this because most of what we want is general shape. I want a good looking silhouette. So it can be in the background of my scene. It looks like something interesting and far off. Uh, most of what we're going to be doing here is some basic textures. So really what I'm trying to get done here is just the silhouette. Like I said, the outline of the ship. I want it to look decent. I want it simple because it's going to be at a very extreme distance from the camera view. But... I want the option to kind of, maybe I want to get a little closer with my camera view for a certain part of the scene or whatever. So I'm going to add a little bit here. Now you don't want to use a subsurface modifier on your giant hole bits like this. You can, if you're doing some, you know, micro subsurface modeling, product design and stuff like that. But for a larger ship like this, you're going to be seeing plates and panels and stuff like that so that's kind of what you want to focus on just the general shape we're trying to go for a boxy yet angular type situation here angular stuff always looks futuristic it looks high tech that's why i added the little bit of uh angle on the back wings there wing i guess if you can call them wings i just want to make sure that it, you know Things are going well enough. Now we're going to go ahead and add a little bevel here. Yeah, there's going to be moments like, you know, where I piece things together instead of extruding. It's simply for demonstration on how to fix certain issues you come across while modeling. 
proper workflow for expanding objects is to use the extrude function and then add it to geometry that way. But to each their own, you'll, you know, as you move on in your blender journey and your modeling journey, you'll learn to do things your own way. You'll learn to do things your own way and you'll evolve as a modeler, as an artist. Also, if you've noticed every once in a while, I have a pie menu add on. Uh, you might not have it, so you can still press A to select all your vertices in your edit window if you need to do that. Here I'm using, you know, circle select and box select and uh, just trying to make sure that I have things properly shaped. I'm kind of, you know, filling out the fuel cell or the fuel tank shape right now. And I need to clean up the geometry a little bit. I need to take care of the bottoms of the spheres. And I want to kind of add an angle here. We're going to go ahead and just take it outside here because I just want the inside. And right now my edge select is not working properly. So I had to do it this way. It's fine. Hopefully your edge select will work for you. You can always use control quick and it will go from your initial selection to your new selection in the shortest path that it can. We'll do some more little cool tips videos like that in the future for you guys. Now right here, I'm trying to go ahead and get rid of the bottoms. I want to make sure that these spheres are not an issue anymore. I'm just going to delete all these vertices, but I want to make sure the ones that I don't want deleted aren't selected. Now we can just boop. There we go. Oh yeah. And uh, I have a computer issue. So I, there's certain hotkeys I'm not able to use right now. That's fine. I'll just have to turn that off later. But now I've got my little capsule pill looking thing and we just attach it, boom, boom, boom. Or alternatively, we could duplicate it once and then we can grab them both and duplicate it again. And this is really good for when you're making a race. I'll show you with windows later on. But uh, yeah, it's just an easy way to kind of duplicate things. Grab all four of them, and then we can make some smaller ones. Maybe these are, you know, some compressors or something. We'll make them sideways, too, just to differentiate them. But you can use the same ships over and over. I'm just trying to figure out where I want to put this. Yeah, we'll just start right here. Not a big deal. But yeah, just reusing assets, gluing them there. They're just magically attached to the ship. Doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to look cool. So you need to do a lot of work and figure out what you think looks cool aside from that though we're gonna have to do some more bevels i want to smooth out some parts of this shape it's not necessarily that i want the camera to be up close but i do want the camera close enough or at least i want this in frame large enough that it can still kind of be a dominant force in the scene but i don't want you really seeing all the details of it now I am having issues here. I should have used outset. I didn't, it's fine. But regardless, just going through and doing some bellows. Gonna have to make sure that this little housing portion here is a little asymmetric on the front and the back. So I put chamfer on the rear and a very simplified bevel on the sides with the front of course being a bit of a more advanced bevel, you know, more uh, smooth, I guess. I'm gonna go ahead and use proportional editing here. I wanna slide it forward, try and get it a nice smooth shape. And I'm just doing basic stuff here. This is nothing that's going to be extremely advanced. Anyone can do this. If you're kind of following along and making your own ship, uh, just do anything you want to do. Find any shape that you like. It's like Legos. Plug it together. It's all in your mind. What can you build? What can you create? These are just tools. Blender is just a tool. And as soon as you learn to use it, you know what a primitive is. The cubes and the cones and the cylinders and the spheres. You know how to mess with the faces and the edges and the vertices. You know how to manipulate them and put them in places you want. You know how to extrude 
and knife cut and bevel all these things once you get very confident with the whole modeling process just the tools at your disposal doing offsets doing insets whatever you are going to be able to make masterful things this is going to be a very basic very simplified ship like i said it's going to be in the background i'm not going to spend all day on it it's a very quick low poly asset i'm not here to make the next generation of starship for a star wars or a star trek film or any other sci-fi film like the expanse no it's just gonna be some random cargo ship that you see in the background or maybe it's you know a really fancy you know imperial battleship or some kind of diplomatic cruiser it can be anything but eh, it is what it is right I'm gonna go through here now the top and the sides of this front end portion I'm gonna just combine them all together of course I'm having issues with my bevel here so I'm gonna use the knife tool I want to make sure that I can just get in there and my inset is not really doing what I wanted to do as you can see struggling it's just because of bevels that I've already placed in, I'm just gonna ignore that because I'm just trying to real quick like attach this together. So we're gonna make some knife cuts. As you can see, I've hidden the main hole. I've got a knife cut there, knife cut there, boom. Now I can inset that face and I can bring it in. Is it messy? Oh yeah. Is it perfect? No. Is it gonna pass the snip test if my production manager comes up? It's gonna be on screen for less than a second or two and it's gonna be in the background, and you're not gonna notice this really messed up geometry. Oh, you didn't know? You didn't know you could do this for high quality production? They do it all the time. They do it all the time. And it's not bad. A lot of work that you see is textures and lighting. That is where most of the awesomeness comes from. When you're making these feature length films and these TV shows, it just comes from the lighting and the textures that you've used. And you won't need displacement on anything like this. Heck, you probably won't even need a bump map if it's gonna be way off in the back. If you have a properly made normal, which for this, probably don't even need one. Could, could go all in and make a really nice normal. Or we could just ignore that and uh, not worry about it. Either way. Hope you guys have seen enough. Hope you guys have enjoyed this portion of the uh, modeling process. We're going to hit textures next, and uh, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.